I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods Volcano Block. Now, jumping in today, we are continuing our journey to the All The Mod Star, but we definitely have some hurdles along our way, and today we're going to talk about even more of those hurdles. Of course, the, the more you look into these recipes, the more you're like, oh, goodness, I'm going to need a lot of these materials. One of those materials was specifically Nether Stars. I think I undercalculated how many nether stars I was going to need. And turns out I actually need 94,000 nether stars. That is a lot. That's a lot. So what I have done is I have gone ahead and just off camera here, I have set up basically the same thing we have done here, except for all of these are running nether stars. They're producing nether stars, putting them in the drawer that's connected to this drawer network. Now, what's happening after that point with all these being upgraded like this, is then I have it running into a crafter. This crafter is then taking that nether star essence and then turning it into nether star shards, which by the way, look like this, and then are being converted into nether stars. Now, I've also upgraded this. So if we look in here, I added a wither skeleton uh, spawner, which I should have done a long time ago to this. And so now we're gaining skulls at a very, very quick rate. So much so, that if we take a look inside of here, we can actually now see how quickly and efficiently our wither spawner is working. So this is working incredibly fast and maintaining the withers being killed every second, basically. So we are keeping a constant supply of withers running and also a good thing. Um, this allows us to see the increase in nether stars. So we already have 27,000 nether stars here and then we also have the 20,000 nether stars, 20.9 thousand nether stars that are here. Um, so what I need to do is probably add this to our list with the linking tool because this drawer is not connected. So now we can see the total nether stars that we have. And currently we're at 48,000. And this is about as fast as I'm probably going to end up producing these. Um, this should be able to, to handle. Of course, this is scalable and you can continue to make this up. But... From the looks, it was it was a over 2 million essence required to make enough nether stars in order to uh, get to that 94,000. So a lot of essence if you're going to go the essence route. And is this faster than the physical way of doing it? Possibly. I do know this uh, produces, without setting it up, this does produce quite a bit. Um, but I don't know if doing it the physical method would grant it and make it any faster. These all produce about one a second. And these produce three essence per process. Um, and so for each one of those, you got to account. This is oh, 27 of them, I do believe. And uh, every second, they're basically producing one essence. So you'd have to have a pretty big farm to keep up with this, as this is, I, I believe, one of the fastest ways to do it. I even tried and compared it to the industrial foregoing method um, in which you use a hydroponic bed. And the hydroponic bed is just nowhere near the speed, and it only produces one essence every process. So I think this is definitely faster. Um, now... I do have other problems though to take care of today. And you may have been spoiled a little bit when I opened up my uh, my my terminal. And you notice over here, we have some storage components that are in craft. These are going to take way too long if I do them this particular way using our original process, logic processor, calculation processor uh, production. So what I was thinking is canceling the production that we have going on and refactoring or redoing our current inscriber setup. These are fast, they're max upgraded, they're doing their thing, they're processing, but they can only operate one at a time. Um, and what I wanna do is I think I wanna scale this up to where it's also a little easier to set up. Um, you don't have to worry about all of these uh, laser IO nodes or anything like that. You basically are just going to place a pattern provider on the inscriber, and that should allow it to function. However, the thing that we are going to need is potentially we are going to want to set up four inscribers, advanced inscribers per pattern provider that are going to go around the pattern provider. And what should hopefully happen is it should separate the workload, especially for this massive project that's about to take place. It should hopefully spread the workload. I, I, I know I'm explaining it. I should just show it. So let's go ahead and put this into practice. Now, I know I'm about to jump into here and show you how to do this, but I do also want to show you what I'm actually working on because it might be a little confusing 
to understand how my brain is working right now. So I have gone through all of these individual things and the improbability probability device is the main thing that I am currently kind of working on. Um, making this, I'm not worried about. It does appear like this process is pretty straightforward in producing these. However, we, yeah, we're just gonna have to set up crafting recipes. So that's not too difficult. Um, doing the flight module that does require several steps we'll get into later. Making a nuke is very easy. Um, the advanced computer is super simple as well. And also these are very simple. They're just crafting recipes. And I've already done the nitro batteries. These are ready to craft. But this, the 256 million mega storage component is massive. This is such a big craft that I don't have the crafting storage to be able to, to call it up. And this is why we need it. This takes so many circuits, so many of these circuits, so much service court, several thousand in fact, um, that you're gonna need and so much, so many of these calculation processes. That's why I need to get this set up. This takes thousands of them, like multiple, like close to 10,000 each for uh, for all of the circuits. It's gonna be way more than 10,000, probably closer to 20,000 for each of those circuits. So yeah, getting them set up is going to be a necessity. So currently, I think I have all of the stuff ready to go. I think I was going to need about 35 advanced inscribers in order to set the, this up the way I want. So let's do that. Now, there is one thing that I need to do first before I break these apart, and that is I'm going to make four of uh, four copies of the inscriber presses, and you can do this by just putting an iron block in. And so if you want to make copies for your friends, this is, of course, one of the best ways to do that. Now it's time to say goodbye to all of the hard work that we set up a long time ago back when we were limited in the things that we could do. So initially I was thinking I was going to need more of these. I was gonna need, uh, I think 30 of them, but I think I can get by with this. So I have uh, four here that is going to allow me to make the circuit or make the, uh, the silicon. Then we have logic calculation and so on. And then we have the final process that is going to eventually happen. Um, so I think this is all gonna work, but yeah, you can get this pretty compact. As you can see, I have the pattern provider here and it's connected to these four sides and it should be able to share uh, over here. So we don't wanna set this to blocking, I don't think. It says, do not push crafting ingredients and inventory if it contains a pattern input. We could get away, I think, with uh, separating some things um, and we might have to do that for the one that completes the final product. Uh, but by default, this should uh, spread the workload across all of the machines if they're full. Now. Um, we are going to need some cables uh, to route some cables back here, but we were already using cables before. Let's check how how many we're actually using on this line. So this particular line uh, does appear to be maxed out. It does have eight channels. This was coming from this line, which is only using six. So we have two channels that we can use here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably grab up here, I think, or I could connect it. Actually, you know, I'm going to connect it to this. Um, so I'm going to run this down and this might be, this should be able to connect to all of these. So this will be one. That'll be two, three, four, five, six, right? That should be exactly what we need. And I'm going to extend these out. It may seem a little weird, but we're also going to need to power the advanced inscribers. So we need to keep that in mind and give ourselves a little bit of space. Um, then on the front, we should be able to pull out of the face with a pipe. It's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world, but we're going to be able to pull out of the face and send into the pattern provider. And then we just need to put the patterns in and hopefully it works. Now, before I go through all of the work of setting this bad boy up, uh, I go, I went ahead and put the uh, inscriber logics in here. You can see I have this set up. It's going to pull eight items every 40 ticks, um, which might be fast enough. We're going to be able to see here in a moment, but Let's go ahead and request some printed silicon once we get this put into the pattern provider. Um, now, I do have some patterns and the, the original pattern should still apply for the most part. Oh, actually, no, we're gonna have to have completely, completely redone patterns here. Um, and so what we're gonna need to do is create a pattern that does each individual thing. And then these will actually be, the, these should be the final product but yeah, I think all of these are going to have to be wiped and all restarted, unfortunately. Um, so under the circuit section, let's go ahead and make one for this. Um, now, it's still going to be removed from this, so we still need to get rid of that. And it's just going to be one to one. That's going to print that out. And so this is going to be the new pattern that goes in here. And what should happen is when we request several of these, 
it should fill this up and then as you can see it's filling to all of them and that's what i wanted to happen and then of course once we get the acceleration upgrades in here things will start moving a lot quicker um but yes i wanted it to split evenly and that is going to make this four times faster than all of the uh the, the prior the prior setup that we had um and so i think this is going to work out very very nice and of course when it is finished the product's finished it gets pushed back into the provider and we're ready to go so i'm gonna get the rest of them set up and uh then we should be ready to to set this and start this craft now this is the section that i'm a little bit worried about i'm hoping that it's smart enough to know where to put the uh the appropriate ingredients but this is the way that it's set up so we take the circuit and then of course the silicon and that gets put in here and so there's only one way to test this out and that is to request some of those and let's see how does this apply it that is the problem it actually it's okay so it's doing this first of course there's no acceleration yet okay and then it it does put them in and it puts them in and it knows exactly where to go oh wow that is uh that is really nice and convenient okay so now we just need to put the speed upgrades in and i think this is all set up and ready to go of course i also went ahead and put the ender dust in here as well because we are going to need to craft that from time to time and this is this is perfect this does all of our circuit crafting and does it very fast. So now the moment of truth. Let's put this to the test. And uh, because we're going to need um, 80 of these 1 million Megan storage components, I went ahead and put it in here, set the stock amount to uh, this. It's going to craft a batch of one at a time, which is more than fine. Um, it really doesn't matter if we batch it higher. It's going to take the same amount of time regardless. Um, so let's go ahead and toggle this on. And that is going to start the request process. And we should see with this upgraded now, you should see this whole setup start to really jumpstart. Or at least it should. Most of them will jumpstart. You can see this is now running very quickly. And I didn't even need to upgrade this. It does appear that it's pulling out the ingredients fast enough. And uh, yeah, it's working just fine. That is perfect. Like, the funny thing is, is I almost wonder, are these item pipes even... Oh my gosh, no, we don't even need these item pipes. They just automatically insert back in. The finished product gets put back into the provider automatically. No wonder they're called advanced. That's funny. So yeah, we don't even need these. That looks so much cleaner. Oh wow, this is so good. Wow, and of course to make this even cleaner, it doesn't even need the power hookups, right? Because it's already receiving a powered connection from our applied energistic system because this can run off of both types of power but as you can see with it when it was doing the initial request look at this it's still working even though it says stored zero of 1000 um so this is still receiving power uh from these machines now see i learned something new every day i didn't know that the advanced inscribers had this particular functionality or i would have done this a long time ago because this is so fast these crafts Look how fast these are processing now. It's like instantaneous. It's so quick. I don't think anything could even compete with that. And it's so clean and there's like really nothing here. Just so it looks like a little wall of these inscribers. That's beautiful. I mean, that absolutely beautiful. Now, of course, as soon as that gets done crafting, we should be good to go. But we do need to craft some other things while that's going on. And let's start with the flight module. So we are going to need a syringe. And this syringe is going to need to be filled with a very special creature. <laughs> that creature is, believe it or not, a ghast. Um, so for that flight module, if we take a look here, it does say that we need a ghast in here. We also need these ender pearls, which are very easy to craft. We just need to make dimensional shards. If you haven't already found them, I don't know if dimensional shards spawn in this particular world, uh, but we are going to need quite a few of them, but they're quite easy to craft. And this would be pretty nice. Like if you didn't use ours, you could potentially use this early on to get a uh, sort of flight uh, throughout your base. Um, so let me see, I should have my, uh, oh, that's right. I used it, I crafted a book and I ended up uh, using up my Rending Gale. Oh, that's frustrating. <laughs> I didn't realize I crafted. So I ended up making the Tome of Alcastri. Um, and realized that it was absolutely useless in this pack, it would be ridiculous to try and use it super slow. Um, so when I made that book, I ended up using my Rending Gale. Um, but anyways, we need to go up here and gas actually spawn in this dimension. 
So it shouldn't be too difficult for us to find some gas. And we just need to punch them. Don't right click. We need to punch. And uh, hopefully we can get some gas to spawn. Let's turn the lights on. And I think they do spawn in the soul sand area. So we just need to head off into that direction, which is gonna be to the west. Actually, there is another thing that we could do that I've not made yet. And it's, uh, we've not even, I've not even touched this mod because I had no reason to. But there's this mod called Gateways to Eternity. And we can just make a ghast pearl. And uh, yeah, I think a large gas pearl as well would be really good. Um, so here's a large gas pearl. And we can just basically spawn in waves of gas. Yeah, it sounds just as ridiculous as you may think. And there we go. That should be more than enough. <laughs> as you can see, when we punch, the syringe is fill filling up here. And so we just continue to do this until we have a full syringe. And then I'm also gonna fill this syringe as well. Of course, by the way, you do get a bonus if you kill all of these mobs. You do get a bonus from the mod. Okay, so we have two filled syringes. But yeah, this would be honestly one of the best ways to do this. But yeah, it looks like we're gonna have five waves of ghasts, which is hilarious. I just love this. If you go out of the range, it does uh, cancel. Well, I guess not out of the range. If you go, if you let it go too long, the timer will expire. But yeah, if you had a way of killing them very quickly, which you can actually use uh, like a mob slaughter factory and stuff like that to kill them as well. Uh, yeah, you get like bonus drops at the end, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that is the uh, the gateway to eternity. There's quite a few mobs in here that you can actually use. It's a good way to farm predictions or not predictions. It's a good way to farm your data models. Um, if that's something you're wanting to do. And of course, just like that, there's the flight module. Just one of many items we're going to need for that improbability probability device. Um, the rest of this should be pretty straightforward to set up. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with this particular setup. And then I like to hit R while doing multi-crafts like this. And I'm just going to go the mechanism route. Um, I do have to craft iron frames. Looks like patterns. Oh, this is also, this might pose a little bit of a problem. Um, let's head down here. I think I have a crafting table that I set up over here specifically for this reason. And so when putting it in here, you notice there's a button up here and this allows us to basically choose what we want. And unfortunately in refined storage, it wasn't letting us do that. So there we go. And now we have some iron frames. I don't know if we're gonna be able to auto craft that. I'm not sure how that actually will, uh, will work. So that is just one of those pieces. Of course, the uh, the advanced computer, that we can literally craft like in no time at all. Um, there's our high density. Uh, so yeah, computer. It's just a basic advanced computer. But yeah, you just need an advanced computer and I don't know if it matters. So this might honestly count even though it does have a computer ID assigned to it. Um, I don't know if you just make an advanced computer if uh if that matters but we'll find out when we go to actually craft it outside of that we just need these solar recharge units and i think i have them on craft we're actually gonna need three of these so these will take a little bit of time to craft as they do craft these advanced solar generators and stuff that they're gonna need for all of that and i think that's it right we just need a nuke <laughs> there's a nuke <laughs> a scary item don't place it down and then of course the batteries so um, I think we have everything. As soon as these are crafted up, like, uh, I think we're ready to go. Well, of course, the, the minus the 256 million storage component, as that thing is still going to take a bit of time. Um, so Mega, what are we currently at? We're at 28 of the storage. We're going to need 80 of these in our storage before we can actually craft out, um, the 25 uh, or, or the, the 256 mil. So yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, it does appear like these are taking about a minute and 30 seconds for each process for each one. So yeah, give it, give or take an hour and this whole process should be done. So while that's working, we should probably start focusing on the Nexium emitter. Um, now to get the Nexium emitter, we already have pretty much everything ready to go. There's just a little bit of manual crafting that needs to take place. We need the nitro um, player, uh, transmitter. However, when I go to craft this, we're going to notice we don't have a player aerial pearl. Um, so we actually need 
to make an aerial pearl. Uh, and I don't remember, I don't think I'd set an autocraft for it. Um, but this is going to be from Pawa. And this thing right here, if we go ahead and produce one, we just need to right click basically a zombie with it. So we need to get a zombie to spawn and then we need to just right click this and then that's how you're going to activate this pearl so you can actually make that 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 uh, player transmitter. And of course, just for ease, let's go ahead and uh, and do this. Let's actually make uh, maybe more than one of these. Go ahead and make more than one of them. Oop, just like that. Uh, and we're gonna, yeah, just use a zombie ender gate and of course summon in a portal that's gonna summon in some zombies. And that should be about as easy as it gets. The wave one is starting. There we go. And we can just grab that. It's always day, so we don't ever get mob spawning anymore. But there we go. So with that, uh, I should now be able to make the nitro version of this. And we just need one. And that's all we need for the Nexium emitter. Um, now, one of the hardest parts about making this Nexium emitter, believe it or not, um, actually just requires a villager. <laughs> so if I had to technically go through all of this mod, it would be incredibly frustrating because there is a lot to this. We'd have to make tons of multi-blocks. Um, and uh, yes, it would be very much, very much a challenge uh, because you have to set up hop graphite and you also need to produce this redstone acid, um, which is a bunch of different mixes all together. And I believe also to make this uh, dropoplast sheet, you need a lot of different things that have to be produced here um, and has to go through this process. But we should be able to get away with this by simply crafting ourselves a villager. However, we are gonna need an engineer's circuit table, which does mean we need um, to basically get a little creosote oil. And uh, the funny thing is, is if I'm already going to be bypassing uh, this mod altogether, which I have definitely used in the past, I think what I could probably do is just completely bypass it entirely. And so I'm going to be using thermal to get our creosote oil. So to make this, we just need ourselves a pyrolyzer, but not just any pyrolyzer. Um, this is going to need, I do believe, an augment in order to produce creosote oil from thermal. Uh, yeah, it's even easier than I thought. So I went ahead and just put the max upgrades in here. And uh, yeah, we get coal coke or just, yeah, coal coke from thermal series. Uh, but I believe this can also be used. But as you can see, we get creosote oil out of this. And um, all we need is a bucket of creosote oil. And so let's grab a bucket. And there we go. And then we can surround this by some planks and that will get us some treated wood. So just like that, we now have treated wood planks. And I think that is the only thing that we absolutely needed um, from this. So as you can see, we just have to convert these over and then turn them into slabs. And I think these are the slabs that were needed here. Um, and then we just need these few things, an iron rod, which we can produce. All of this stuff is very simple, but I do want to get a villager set up and iron plates, of course. I think we are actually have iron plates uh, set up for automation, but these just, uh, I believe, are like this. Yeah. So iron sheets and so on and so forth. Yes. But yeah, everything that uh, we need, we should have. And this is like treated sticks. Oh, yeah. Very easy to set up. And uh, this is going to be the workstation for the villager. So there we go. Now we just need to get a villager. Uh, I think I can just plop one and uh, go ahead and make myself... One of these now i don't know if i'm gonna have to roll mini villagers in order to get this to work but we'll see we'll see how this goes um let's go ahead and spawn in a new villager and uh we'll just go from there right all right so now we have one uh i need to figure out a good area to put this in um i guess we can just set it up over here for right now or actually yeah i'm gonna put it off on one of these islands so let's go ahead and give this a shot i'm actually over in villager land and uh we're gonna set this up um, I think if I place the villager down and then place this, will it change or will it take some time? It may be, uh, not the right time of day. It eh, should be. It may take a little time as well to get this guy employed. So there we go. After just a teensy little bit of time, as you can see, it's now ready to go. Perfect. So yeah, we're just going to trade some emeralds and, uh, see what this guy is willing to trade. 
Uh, hopefully we get the things we need. If not, we'll just recycle the villager because it is in the, the trade pool. So at some point should definitely trade it. Look at that. We get some fancy gear, some fancy leggings. Don't really know. This is just some air that apparently he's trading. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we are going to have to wait for trades to refresh. This guy is a the scam artist. It's actually, no, that's quite a, quite a good deal for those those wires. They're kind of a pain to make. So you're actually, you're actually really nice. I do appreciate this guy. So after getting this guy up to master, look what he sells right there. The Tesla coil. That's perfect. Also some components and also some HV cable coils. So if you were diving into this mod, this villager would be your best friend because buying the cables, I think would be way better than uh, actually going out and doing this another way by hand making these cables. These things are kind of a pain to make. You have to make and snip these pieces or send them through a metal press. So it is kind of nice that uh, you can just buy the Tesla coil. Look at that. And that skips all of that progress, uh, all that stuff that we would have had to have done with immersive engineering, which can be kind of tedious. But of course, if that's something you want to dive into, go for it. That is a fantastic challenge, I think. It does, however, require a lot of space. That is one part about that mod that uh, doesn't go so well with Skyblocks, in, uh, in my opinion, is that it requires a ton of area in order to set up all the automation for it. But it's definitely doable. And there we go. So we now have ourselves even more of the items. And I think that was going to be one of the hardest items. It would have been one of the hardest items um, had it not been for that villager. So pretty darn cool that we got that. And so that's pretty much it for the next emitter. However, we do need uh, ourselves, you know, a couple of grids here. Super simple. I'm just going to get those crafted up. Basically the same thing that we're using. And it doesn't necessarily specify what terminal. It just says installed terminals and actually doesn't say anything at all. It just says wireless universal terminal has no specific terminals listed. So I'm not sure if it specifically matters what you put into it. And hopefully it doesn't. Uh, outside of that, we have to get ourselves the L the, the HV solar panel. Um, now I do have, I believe, all of the NVs crafted. These are all just regular crafting patterns that I can do with um with the planet logistics. However, I can't do the uh, the other. I can't do the like highest tier parts because it's going to require some of the same things that we did uh, last episode, uh, which we need these. We need two more plasma cores, and of course some iridium plates. Um, so to make the plasma core, well, we're going to need all of these alloys and then we're also going to need, uh, the magnets and we're also going to need more plasma cells. So with all of these in place, we have to hand do these, right? Remember it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four. And I think it was two magnets per with this in the center. And there we go. We have another plasma core and I need to make two of them. Now with this, I should be able to craft all of the individual components needed for this. So I just need this cable here. Um, looks like I am going to have to request it. But outside of that, this this is basically it. Um, so I'll get those requested. Um, and then I already have that added there. Perfect. Make these and we get four of those. So no need to really worry there. We get four of them. And then, of course, the PESD. This thing right here, we just need to craft one of them. And then I should have everything needed for this. This is the I, uh, the IV transformer, which is the tier five. And then last but not least, there's the HV solar panel. So that is, I believe, the other component that was needed here. And then we've already made the singularities. Um, and then of course the supercharged coil, we're going to get those requested and um, I think we actually have this where we can just auto craft it directly. So yeah, we'll just get the supercharged coil made up. And last but not least is just putting everything together for the next sim emitter. So I now should have everything needed. And there we go. There's the next sim emitter just like that. So master of the sky is now completed. And then of course we can go ahead and add this to our pool, but we should before long, let's go ahead and check on our mega. We now have 68 of these, so we're getting pretty close at this point. This shows how much time has passed by. And so once this gets to 80, I can then craft it. And then we'll also be able to make the improbability probability device. And just like that, there we go. The next emitter. Oh boy, I'm pretty excited because this is like one of the last things needed. Uh, that is actually really difficult in my opinion, or takes a long amount of time. That's the 256 million mega storage components. 
I can now actually craft this and hit the start button and it is going to produce that literally taking less than a minute because of how fast these now make printed circuits. Oh, this is so good. And all of our work is slowly paying off. There we go. There is the cell we need, which is the final thing that goes with this whole setup here. And so just to pull all of these items down, let's get them all in my inventory. There we go. And then do, of course, craft it. And I'm hoping that uh, this right here will uh, will work. This, of course, has a stored program in it, but should be fine. And there we go. The improbability probability device. And uh, that is, in my opinion, one of the second hardest things to craft simply because of the sheer amount of resources and time needed to make all of those circuits. And my goodness, is it beautiful. So last but not least, there's one more of these items. I love how it's such an impossible thing to make, like so insane. And then we get we get basically three refined obsidian ingots. I really feel like the quest for this should definitely be reworked and like the reward tiers, there should be like special reward tiers for the creative stuff. I really do feel like that should definitely be some higher quality items. Like maybe in return, you get the some of the items back that uh, that you put into it. And maybe you get lucky and you get back one of those items that you put into the initial craft. That'd be kind of nice. That would also help get another star. Uh, maybe that's something I can suggest to the all the mods team. Who knows? Uh, but anyways, this is ready to go. And it goes right next to this right here. And so we'll slap this down and put ourselves a pro an improbability probability device. And oh boy, does it look beautiful. Yes, we are now very, very close. We're still waiting on nether stars, but outside of that, we just about have everything we need in order to craft the all the mod star. And believe me, it's going to be quite epic when we put it all together. So I know this episode was quite a bit of a longer one, but if you guys did enjoy and you're looking forward to seeing that all the mod star and you don't want to miss it, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that episode. And of course, future episodes to come. And guys, I do thank you so much. Click that like button if you also enjoyed. All of the work that goes into these videos is quite a lot, um, as you don't really get to see all of the stuff that happens off camera. But of course, a like would suffice, and I would really appreciate that. And of course, comment down below as well, uh, something that you think is interesting about today's episode. I don't know, what do you think about the villager? Uh, do you like that the villager exists in here, or would you like to see the villager gone so you are forced to go through the other process? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd really like to know. And of course, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And of course, that amazing thanks is going to go out to Kumo. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Of course, guys, be sure to check out the amazing Discord if you haven't already. That is discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the amazing modded community today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, you know how it goes. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.